This is a quick guide how to set up analog controls for GTA 5. Before we jump into it, I just want to mention a couple of things for GTA 5 is that you have to deal with walking, driving, and flying. Walking in GTA 5 doesn't have any analog control. So that means that you can just use your digital profile in general if you're on foot in GTA 5. But if you're in a car, you can swap to the analog control. The thing though is you cannot use your analog controls on foot because the bindings we're going to use will have a different effect on foot than it has on a car or an airplane. So I recommend for this reason to set up at least two analog profiles, one for driving, one for flying, and you just use the regular digital mode for walking. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like and jump into the utility first before we jump into GTA 5. Here we are in the utility. I've already set up my analog profile for GTA 5. As you can see here, you need to bind left joystick, left and right to A and D respectively, and left trigger to S and right trigger to W. You won't really need any other buttons, but I have also binded the A button to enter just in case the game doesn't recognize the keyboard as a controller. It might be with the first time that you'll need to do it. So if you go further down, we see my analog settings, my analog curve settings. I've, I have this preference of four, five, six. Uh, this will improve in the future with a different analog curve and we'll have more control, but this works the best for me in GTA 5. I have my activation point of 3.6. This is for one of the variations, how you can set this up but I'll show you in a second also how to do the other variation, which I would prefer. Now, if we go further down, we can see our DKS. We don't need any DKS here, so it's empty. And that's all you need actually for uh, the utility and what you would have to save on the keyboard. So let's jump into GTA 5 and see how this already works out without having changed anything in GTA 5. All right, we're now in GTA 5. And as you can see, I can already immediately on the motorcycle have analog control by controlling my speed here. And I can control my steering also, slow steering here. And I haven't changed any settings in GTA 5. It's all the default settings. Now, the thing I've done here, as you saw in the utility, is that the activation point was on 3.6 millimeter. This means that the digital keys, which are the keyboard keys, will activate on the 3.6 millimeter. I've also kept on the digital keys, meaning that I can still use my keyboard as regular. So I can still press all the other buttons that you are used to in GTA 5. The only difference is now I also have analog control. Now, as you can see, if I step off the motorcycle and I try to walk around, AD is fine, but as soon as I press W, it starts punching. The reason why it starts punching is because my W is also bound to R2, which is shooting, or in this case, punching in GTA 5. This is why you need to have your digital mode. You can just press the mode button, which you can also configure to a different button. And you can walk around with your digital keys like normal. To really get the most out of GTA 5, we're going to go and jump into a little bit more of an advanced style of controlling analog. So to do this, we need to jump into GTA 5 settings and we need to change some bindings in the game. So the thing we want to change is we want to remove the WASD from the car controls. So in this case, here we have WASD for accelerate brakes, steer left and right. We want to remove those. Now, unfortunately, GTA doesn't allow you to keep keys unbound. They always want you to bind something. Even if you remove it unbound, it, uh, you're still able to use these keys. I guess they're too important. So we're going to bind them on some other keys. In this case, we're going to go for something else uh, that I need to find out, which is free. Looks like this is working out just fine. All right, so now we have the keys bound to another set of keys. If I'm right, I'm in digital mode. I should not be able to control the motorcycle right now. And I can't, it's not driving. And now it should be on O and one of those other two buttons. There we go, yeah, that works. All right, so obviously this is where we have analog mode for. We jump to analog mode for the control. So I jump to analog mode now, and there we go. And it's working. I have control. Now the reason why I removed those settings from GTA 5 is because now what we can do 
is we can change the activation point. So let's jump back to the utility and make that change. Let's change that activation point. So here we see we have our digital keys enabled, which is good because we can still use our keyboard keys. But now I want to move that one all the way to 1.5 millimeter because that's where you get the fastest uh, reaction. It's the fastest activation point you can get. And that would be my personal preference. Now, the second thing we can do to optimize the total experience is we can move the mode key. So the mode key is usually on the most right top button on the keyboard, which used to be pause or scroll lock, however you see it. Now we're going to change that one to the F1 key. Now keep in mind, this can be any key you want. F1 is just something I've randomly chosen. So now we save this to the keyboard. We go back into DJ5 and now to swap around buttons, we can just, or swap around modes, we can just press F1. So I'm on a motorcycle, I'm in my analog profile, and then we decide to step off. And as you can see, I'm doing this walking and fighting, which we don't want. So that's why I can press F1 now, and I'm walking. And as soon as I jump into a vehicle, in this case, I press F1 again, and now I'm driving. And you can quickly swap around. You can set up everything in a similar fashion, for flying, uh, just have to make sure you bind the right buttons. It works exactly the same way, nothing to worry about. Now, it could be the case that maybe the keyboard's not recognized as a controller. For this, uh, please visit our knowledge base, the how-to, uh, and then go to the troubleshooting. That's where you would find most of the solutions. For GTA 5, the, the quickest solution is just to, like I showed you before, bind the A button to a key and just spam that one in the game so it recognizes the controller. An alternative method is to unplug and plug in your keyboard and then it will recognize the controller. If you encounter any problems with this setup or you can't get it to work in GTA 5, you're always welcome to contact us at social.wooding.nl or head over to our Discord, link is below. We're always here to talk, we're always here to help and we'll see you in the next video.